Fredo was freaking out last night uh, because Donald Trump is just doing all these all these crazy things. It's unconstitutional. No, it's not. Asking for a fair and accurate count is not unconstitutional. In fact, there couldn't be anything more constitutional <laughs> than that. Um, but he was saying anybody who is saying that, that's supporting him now on Twitter, uh, you are, you know, anybody who's disputing the election, you are disrupting this democracy, and there needs to be a list of all of those people. I'm confused. Did, did we have a list? No. We, no. we didn't have a list, did we? Or maybe no. I just wasn't told about the mm-hmm. list. I, sometime I'm left off these emails. But why didn't we have a list? Why didn't we try well, to destroy... Well, we were destroy... too busy uh, burning cities down. I think right, that's right. What we no, wait, yeah. the no, wait, that was them too. Oh, that, that was, was them too. too. Yeah. Hold they on, can, hold on. They can chew gum and walk, or in this case, they can make lists <laughs> and burn cities <laughs> down that's... at the same time. Wow. The, the level of hypocrisy with these people is insane. So, Dave, you used, you, I mean, I don't yeah. say this as a slam, <laughs> and I hate to bring this up. <laughs> All right, let's go. No, but, but you were with these people yeah. for a long time. So what I'm asking you is, why aren't there more people like you? Well, why I aren't think there, there are. People that are like going, oh, okay, this is nuts. Well, A, I think there are, which is why Trump got 10 million more votes this time than last time. So putting aside what the ultimate outcome will be, the fact that despite everything trying to destroy this guy, the entire freaking system trying to take this guy out for four years, he got 10 million more votes. So I do think there are more people like me. You know, there's this walk away movement. Mm-hmm. Just the amount of people that everywhere I go and the amount of emails that I get of people that said, Dave, I was a lefty. I mean, that the irony is, you know, people will say, oh, Dave, your, your audience is so right now or so conservative or something like that, which I, I don't mind. But most of my audience is the disaffected lefty. It's the lefty who just said something went wrong here. It's the lefty that, and I hate to use the word lefty, it's the the lefty that actually I can live next door to yeah. and have a great time because we agree on the principles of the Bill of Rights. Well, all you're asking actually, Glenn, if you really want to whittle this is, whittle it down is you just want the lefty next door to not think you're a Nazi. That's how stupid this has gotten that they have tricked everybody into thinking that their their political opponents are Nazis. At that point, there is no reason to give them quarter because, or grant them anything decent mm-hmm. or say hello to them on the street or anything else because then you will be an accomplice in that system and that is what they're doing. So, so that really is what it's about at this point. They have said half the people in America are evil. We don't sit here doing that. Yes, can we joke, look, can we, make jokes about Antifa, which is actually a terrorist organization, I believe, a domestic terrorist organization, and the bad ideas of AOC and Ilhan Omar and the Mm -hmm. rest of it. Yeah, but we're not sitting here telling you that the 75 million people that supposedly voted for Biden are evil. I think they've got a lot of the wrong ideas, but in many ways, I sympathize with it because A, I was one of them, but also you can't blame them in a lot of cases because this is what they're being fed. And it's harder work to, to put in the 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 work basically to to think freely. it's also That's the hard to do what you and i both to some degree you more than me did in our lives we we stopped our life and we went wait i'm not sure the things i believe in are true yeah and i want to turn over every stone and see what i actually believe that's really hard and scary for people that's very frightening because you're afraid that's everything I believe. So am I going to lose my friends? I mean, yes. because when it happened for me, this is before all this stuff. I did lose friends. Yep. I had to lose friends because I believed different things. Uh, and now it's even more dangerous. So you know how we're getting this meme now of, uh, you know, reconciliation and we yeah. should come together and all that. So you'll love the story. So I have a friend who I've known literally my, my whole life since, you know, three years old or something. And... We have gone our different ways politically, but we've always remained friends over the years. About two years ago, as I was really sort of shifting more right or whatever you want to call it at this point, we, we went out for dinner in New York City. We, we met at a bar first and we got there and he immediately just started going after me over politics, just going at me, going mm. at me, going at me. You know, I'm a, I'm a sellout and I'm hanging out. with. I mean, I think he literally mentioned your name like, <laughs> you know, I'm <laughs> Shapiro and Beck and the rest of them, you yeah. know, all this stuff. And... uh and he just kept going, and, and I, he had just had a third kid, and I said, you know, let's talk about the kids. Like, we don't have to talk about politics. It's all good. We don't have to agree on this stuff. The same stuff that I would do with anyone, right? Mm-hmm. And he just couldn't stop. And finally I said to him, do you think it's possible that I believe what I believe 
as much as you believe what you believe. And without hesitating, he said no. It didn't even register one split second of, of introspection. And so, then, wait, so he just thought you just sold your me, soul meaning that, for that the money? Only, or? Yeah, that in essence, the only reason I could possibly do any of this stuff and talk about these things is because I'm either a sellout or, you know, so, something like that, that he couldn't even, you know, this is, a, this is a lifelong friend. This isn't someone I met two years ago. So you know where I come from. You know my parents. You know my family, all of that stuff. But imagine saying that. Do you think it's possible that I believe what I believe as much as you believe what you believe? And to not even pause. Imagine if someone said that to you. That, that's a pretty powerful thing mm-hmm. to have said to you. To not even pause for a moment and, and really ponder the question. Is it possible that, that the motivations here you heard are not from him evil? since? Well, that's where the story goes, <laughs> which is so then basically I've never done this before. The conversation continued to get really heated after that. And I've never done this before. And I pray I never have to do it again. I threw a bunch of cash on the bar and I left. We did see each other once after that. It was a little dicey, but then, and, and this is the interesting part, on Saturday night when they called the election for, for Biden, the media again calls the election for Biden, I get a text message from him, no, no text in it, just a picture of us at my brother's wedding. Hmm. No text. And I thought, this is what the fake reconciliation is. Mm-hmm. You finally got, after four years, you think that the evil thing is out and you're back in power, so now the friendship can resume. You know what I mean? Like he's mm. sending me a picture of us Jeez. now where if, if Trump had won, that picture doesn't come. There, there's no, you know what I mean? So it's like when they're telling you reconciliation, what they're saying is, ah, we got what we want and now you will be our pets again. And I say that this is very depressing for me to talk about because this, this was a lifelong good friend. But that, that mind virus that now... Now it's okay, everybody. I mean, that's what the media is pushing on us. Guys, now, the hate's over now. We're, yeah. we're, we're good. As long as you, because they're, they're not saying, uh, what they're saying, I, I find this amazing, is they have to recon- reconcile with these 70 million people. Otherwise, they'll do it again. Yeah. So wait a minute. Do what? Dude. <laughs> Vote for what we believe in? Yeah. Stand firmly where we think is right? Disagree with you on the Constitution? Do what? Vote for a guy that didn't get us into more wars, that started bringing peace to the Middle East, that wants to even now, potentially in his last days, finish off getting out of Afghanistan, got rid of all this regulation, allowed the states to manage some of the COVID stuff, which regardless of the results was the right way to do it. I mean, what what are they... Act- the, the thing is, they, in many ways, are everything that they purport Trump to be. So even to just to, go, just to go to where we started the conversation... Just this morning, I saw the clip, uh, Christine, uh, what's her name? Christiane Amanpour on CNN. Did you see this? Did you see this this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Hang on, we have it. Can we play that, please? It's horrific. You don't don't have it? Christiane Amanpour? Okay. Go ahead and say. In in essence, she showed video of, because I believe, is it today that's the anniversary of Kristallnacht, which was the, the day in Germany that they started destroying all the Jewish stores and everything and burning down and burning the books. There's a lot of famous video of this. And in essence, she plays video for about 30 seconds of it, which is horrific video. You know, you see stores being destroyed and books Correct. being burned and the whole thing. And then she, she then what does she do? And so now we're getting, at, we're getting out of four years of pretty much the same thing with Donald uh, Trump. There, was, there were no Donald Trump supporters that were breaking windows and setting things on fire. Zero. You're not going to believe this. I was at a Trump rally in Beverly Hills. You've been to Rodeo Drive, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the fanciest Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah. The rally, which was on Santa Monica Drive, thousands of people, American flags, all sorts of people there. You know, they had, yeah, they yeah. had Christians for Trump and Jews for Trump and Muslims for Trump, and they were gay people and black people and blah, blah, blah. Well, they walked down Rodeo Drive. You're not going to believe this. Nobody broke into uh, Manolo Blahnik. Nobody, nobody broke into the, yeah, but the Gucci they, store. I'll bet you their sales went up. <laughs> I bet you. I bet you a lot of those guys were like, "Okay, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna get that for my wife. I'm gonna pick uh, up that, fa- pick that up fancy that. purse." I saw it as we were walking by. It looked nice. Yeah. It's it's incredible yeah. how we are being told the exact opposite, and uh, that never leads to anybody any place good. Look, this is this is gaslighting of the highest order. We're, we're we're being fed nonsense so that it's the reverse of what we see in front of our eyes. What could a friend have said to you if you were still there today? If you were yeah. one of your friends, yeah. Um, what could a friend say to you to open up an honest dialogue if they suspect that you might be going? Gosh, I don't. I, I, this is bothering me. 
some of this crazy stuff? You know, I get this question a lot, usually from college kids, because they're dealing with this on the yeah. front. They're really on the front lines of this because, you know, they're they're at a place of supposed higher learning and their friends are starting to figure out what they think and they're starting to figure it out. So you see this at colleges. You know, one one simple version is if, if you have a friend that's in the midst of this thing, you know, you could try. You can't you can't usually you can't say to them, well, read on liberty, <laughs> you know, yeah, read, yeah, yeah. read common sense, you know, read, right. read Glenn's book on socialism. Like, you can't really do that because they, they just won't. You know, you can try to feed them a, like, can you take three minutes to watch this PragerU video? Like that, that's kind of good. But, but if you need something just in the immediacy of the conversation, I think what you can say is, well, if you're worried about policies, let's say that have, that have harmed the black community, let's say I, I believe that there are policies that do that. Well, who, who put these policies in? If you're, if you're telling me mm-hmm. that the black community is suffering and can't get out of a cycle of poverty mm-hmm. and all of these things, well, do you think affirmative action, the democratic policies of keeping people on the state dole ha- have helped? And and you got to show them, and they usually won't have evidence and then they'll get very angry. I mean, it becomes this game that we've all played. Mm-hmm. But if you say to them, well, wait a minute, we've we've given people affordable housing, we've we've helped people, you know, to where in effect then just get stuck in a cycle. And and this is this is something that is real. It is not fake. My sister who now left New York City because of COVID and it's become a ghost town. She lived in a building that was half rent controlled and half market value. So my sister's in an apartment with a tiny apartment with her two kids and her husband paying an extraordinary amount of money where she could have <laughs> she could have half a Dallas, right, to live in New York City. But then half the building is people that have generationally lived there because it's rent controlled. Mm-hmm. And if you can pay four hundred dollars a month to live in a beautiful high rise in New York City, why would you get off the government all this this has nothing right. to do with skin color right this has to do with just the basic human you don't give it up you, you don't give it up and then you go well all right so i'm not going to try for that better job because the problem is if i get that better job i'm going to lose this great house and then i got to move you know miles out of new york city Correct. or whatever it might be so it's Correct. the policies but but this is one of the things i see in california all the time everyone in california complains about the policies the schools suck the roads suck there's homelessness everywhere but, but they for some reason they cannot jump that synapse they cannot connect that with oh you know we've been voting in democrats that's this whole what time. scares me about texas yeah. all these people are coming know. and they haven't connected the dots you needed to talk to abbott about a, a declaration that people would have had to sign on the way i talked in. to perry <laughs> i did i talked to perry i said you need to go in and you need to give a speech to all these new ceos and uh, and tell them look you need to tell your people while you why you're moving here because you can't get done, whatever state you're coming from, you can't get done. I gave a speech to about 100 new CEOs that had moved from California here to Dallas. And I asked them, how many have moved here because of regulation relief? They all raised their yep. hands. How many of you now have said to your employees that none of them raised their hand? I said, you're going to get the same regulation because they will continue to vote those things in. You know what it is? It's also partly just cowardice. It's not like they under, they're they leaving because they see their business is crumbling. Everything else, but then they move here. And then it's not that they don't know that the policies are bad, but they're still stuck in the, in the lefty mindset of cowardice of, oh, if I say something now, yeah. even though I'm here in Texas, which is far freer and far more okay, that they still think they will be crushed. And in a weird way, they're right because they're importing the other people mm-hmm. who will crush them. Mm-hmm. Dave Rubin, thank you so much. Uh, my pleasure, Rubin my Report, friend. You can find that online. Uh, you can also find it on Blaze TV. Dave Rubin.